Hey YouTube, I'm back. This is John, aka Rock. Uh, today I'd like to talk about faith. Big subject, faith. There's a scripture about faith, there's, there's several scriptures about faith, but one that I'd like to read to you guys. Uh, actually, uh, I circled this during a church service a few years back from my pastor. It says in John 20, verse 29, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Now, I always tell you guys that I'm not, I'm not very well versed. I do read my Bible quite a bit, but I'm not real versed in every scripture in the Bible or many scriptures in the Bible. So a lot of what I say is my interpretation of what I read from the Bible. So that being said, um, I'd like to explain how I view faith. For me, I don't think you've heard the statement you either have to be hot or cold. I mean, if, if hot or cold, and if you're lukewarm, it's kind of more. It's more dangerous to be kind of riding the fence. And that's really true because for someone who has never had a chance to hear about God or hear about Christ, they don't they don't know. I guess they're you know I don't know if, if it may not be they're not, they're at the age of uh, accountability, but if they are at the age of accountability and they had never been taught about you know God about the um, the life of Jesus and what he did and what he went through, then you know it, it's different than someone who like. The ones of those, the ones of you out there that are Christians and you know what God's rule, you know what God's plan is for us, and you completely, not you, all of us, completely disregard some of his teachings. Um, you know, the idea behind faith is to believe, and if if what we were taught from science, you know, Scientology or Scientists trying to, you know, decide where they found the ark. I think they said they found the ark in Turkey or something like that. But uh, all these different things you hear, all these different theories about why God's real, or how we can prove uh, where his tomb was and, and things like that. I'm not discrediting any of those things. I'm, I'm simply saying that the idea for me from what I read is the word faith is faith. It's not, you don't have evidence, there's not, there's not a physical, you know, man-made evidence that gives you this confirmation. Uh, if it were, faith wouldn't be faith. I mean, faith is based on what you believe in your heart. I mean, if you think about the emotion, love, hate, sadness, how do you explain, how do you explain love, what's it look like? It doesn't look like anything. If you're sad, what does it look like? It doesn't have shape, it doesn't smell, it doesn't it has no physical identity, but you believe it because you feel it. And so faith is complete and one hundred percent identity with the presence of God and there doesn't matter what anyone tells you, what what you know, there's going to be people tell you all day long that there's, there's, you know, all the the Bible was written by men and different men wrote it and it was their opinions. Well, the way I, and there's always going to be someone that asks you, especially believers, is going to ask you a question somehow to try to redefine what the Bible means. And in my opinion, if if anything's changed, the whole the whole thing would be wrong. I mean, uh, for me, faith is whatever I read in the Bible. I I believe it. Period. There's no exception. But what I try to do is, when I'm asked questions like, um, how do you explain the Virgin Mary having Jesus without uh, having physical contact? And well, because it says she did. It's faith. Um, when you think about like I said, the books, 
you know, supposedly there's some books missing. Uh, there's a lot I don't know about the Bible. I always admit that. I think they're called the Dead Sea Scrolls. If they were supposed to be in there, God would have put them in there. So for me, when I'm asked that question about how could the Bible be perfect and how can all this stuff have happened, well, it's simple. It's perfect because he made it. It's his word. and I feel like the best Christians in the world still have doubts. I mean, we're, you know, we're still affected by the world, but I think if I had if I had to offer my opinion that I think God is pleased with the more absolute faith you have, the more just 100% belief that he existed and what he and what what Jesus went through on the cross. He just wants you to trust him. I mean, faith is, some non-believers will use, uh, will, will, you'll hear this statement, um, well, the Bible's written, you know, the whole story about Jesus is, is to keep people from not being worried about death. Well, the devil's a liar. It's, I, I believe it's John 10.10. 10. I think that he says the devil will come to kill, steal, and destroy. You need to look that up, guys. Um, there's always going to be something, someone, and it's going to be promoted from the devil to, to try to discredit God's word. It's been ha it's happened since the day the book was, since the beginning. That's going to be every day, everywhere you go. There's going to be someone try to discredit it. And for you Christians, stand by your faith, stand by your word, no matter what you hear, no matter what you. Even if you get that little word that in the back of your mind that says, is this real? Is this, is this entirely real? It is. It is. I mean, I could, I could mention things all day that would prove the Bible's real. You know, uh, I could mention um, how do people, where do we come from? If you believe in the Big Bang Theory, what started that? There's a lot of things I could mention that would offer proof to God's existence, but then again, if I do that, then it takes away from the idea of faith. Faith doesn't need proof. And we have the Bible, that's our proof, if you want proof. Anytime you decide that you need evidence for faith, then it cancels the idea of faith. So I believe what God would want from us is our 100% from our heart, non-questioning, belief that he gave his son for our sins if you could imagine if you had a child what separates Jesus from us many things but uh, if you had a child if you had to give your child away for another child would you do it it'd be one thing to give your life for someone else it says in the Bible there's no greater thing than giving your life for a friend I believe so um, but if you think about what makes God's love so defined so beautiful as that he sacrificed his son for you and for me and sometimes when I'm I could be doing anything and I'll I'll just stop and think about that I try to I, I think about the movie um, The Passion there's a lot of controversy about uh, how brutal and how horrible it was. You know, why why did it need to be so? Why did it need to be such an aggressive movie? Why did it have to be so bloody? Well, the fact of the matter is, sometimes the only way to get God's word to the masses is in that light. Um, you know, God. A lot of times, a Christian. Christian lifestyle is not too publicized in Hollywood or it's publicized incorrectly and the way I look at that movie The Passion is yeah it was bloody it was gory it was bad but the funny thing is uh, even in the beating of Jesus in that movie it didn't begin to touch the surface of the actual pain and the suffering and sometimes the only way for us as people to really identify with the amount, the gravity of pain and suffering and horrifying 
experiences that Jesus went through during that time period, it has to be graphically explained, even though it's not close to the, the amount of torture that he went through, we could probably never understand it. The only way for us to actually be there, or at least enough to where we understand the kind of torture that this man went through for us, it has to be, it has to be graphically put in front of you. But I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll be praying, I'll, I'll be praying, I'll be at work, I'll be at church, and it'll hit me that this man, he, he lived a life. He was the only one to live a perfect life, and this is a human being like you are, like I am. This is a human being that walked the earth, and he lived a perfect life, and um, he was judged by everyone for saying that he, you know, for, you know, they thought that he thought he was a, the holy one. I don't remember the exact words because I'm all, all of my videos I do kind of off the top of my head, I, I pray before I do the videos and I, I study a little before I uh, talk, but um, you know, the people in the city thought he was crazy and so they persecuted him and even on the cross, Jesus, if you remember from the movie uh, from, or from the Bible, uh, even during that time with him on the cross and him in torture and him bleeding to death, uh, the Jewish people, I believe it was, um, they um, they were looking up at him in hatred and disgust, and they were laughing and spitting at him and throwing rocks at him. And the whole time that Jesus run, uh, was on the cross, the only thing he could think was not how bad he had it, how much they were hurting him. The only thing he cared about is us. And he, he asked God to forgive them because they don't, you know, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. That is the epitome of faith. When I think about that, it seems impossible for me not to not to have faith in God. That this man tortured, he went through so much torture for us. And sometimes it's extremely, I lie by my mind, even in the middle of a day in the world when people just think I'm <laughs> staring off for no reason, I think about it. Every time I pray, every time I talk to someone who's in need, I think about it. And if it's the least I can do is dedicate a few minutes of my life to a video to tell you guys my experience with faith, it's worth it. I don't expect anything from these videos. I just hope that someone, whoever it might be, is watching the video. It might, it might stir up something in your heart to think about it. Being faithful, it's a daily walk. It's a daily decision, not just in public. It's something you do when you're alone. When you're driving down the street and someone cuts you off in traffic and you want to scream or cuss. I, you just have to stop and think about how the Lord wants you to react and have faith in what he says. He says, forgive, you know, and have faith in me. And I want to say one other thing. Things kind of randomly pop up in my head when I'm talking. Um, it is... It is... Everything that matters in life, nothing you have, nothing you do, no one you see, nowhere you go, there's nothing more important than your faith in God. Without Him, you're nothing. You have nothing. You are nothing. 
Life isn't life without him. Everything that's good comes from him. And guys, I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. I could go on about the subject, uh, but that was just kind of what the Lord put on my heart. Uh, you can subscribe to the link below. Um, my sixth video should be coming out pretty soon. God bless. Peace.